Yo, what's going on guys? Alex the Card Guy here. Um, so, you've probably seen my posts somewhere, Facebook, E4, wherever, advertising my complete Watsy collection that I'm trying to finish. And I finally put it together, so thanks to everybody that helped contribute. Uh, so I wanted to go ahead and show the entire collection uh, now that it's complete. So, let's get right into it. And the first binder here is uh, Base Jungle Fossil. Got the Charizard graded here. There are a few cards that are graded within the collection just because they are more valuable cards and I uh, wanted to have them slabbed up. The Hollow set for base is the only set in the entire collection that is unlimited. Everything else is first edition. Um, so the, the non-Hollow base set is all first edition. And uh, everything in the collection is near mint condition or better. I tried to pick things that would at least get an 8. Um, there are some 7 condition cards within the sets, I'm sure, just due to certain grading standards. But, like, say if a card had a slight indentation in it, like in just one small spot, but the rest of the card was flawless, I deem that as a very, very good mint binder card. Um, so, yeah. Next set here is Jungle. Jungle was actually the last set I think I had to put together. It uh, was extremely difficult to finish for some reason. I have no idea. Finding these cards in the condition that I wanted for my collection was very, very difficult. Um, this is Fossil set here. The Gengar is actually should be graded. Um, it's I tried to look for like a downgrade for it, but uh, <laughs> couldn't find one. So I just ended up leaving it how it is. But yeah, everything in this collection, especially the uh, pack, f the pack fresh stuff, uh, mainly is in the common and uncommon section. So most of the uncommon and common sets are pack fresh. Now these are these are something. These are part of like one of my favorite things in the collection. The uh, little inserts from the top deck magazines that tell you about the sets and really define the set. I think these make like the perfect introduction to a binder set. The Charizard I had graded as well. Very, very beautiful nine Charizard. Now we're finishing up generation one here. This set does go all the way through Neo Destiny. Some awesome, awesome artworks throughout all of WotC, so. I decided not to go with the E-Series sets. They're not nostalgic to me. I got the pre-release Dark Gyarados here as well. Tried to do pre-releases where applicable. I didn't do the pre-release Clefable just because it almost doesn't exist raw in the condition I wanted. And I also didn't want to pay $1,000 for one. So, but yeah, I decided not to do the E-Series sets. They just aren't nostalgic for me like the rest of Watsy. Another insert here for Gym Heroes. I think these are, I mean, these are just, it's so cool. Um, they've got like the different like overview quizzes, encyclopedia, top 10 checklist. Like there's just so much cool information within these and they're actually ridiculously difficult to find as well. So uh, I just got lucky and picked them up in a collection. Absolutely love the gym heroes and gym challenge sets. Definitely, definitely some of my favorites. The artwork within the non hollow slots is, I mean, arguably some of the best created in Pokemon. These are also some of the bigger sets. So the non hollow sets from Gym Heroes and Gym Challenge are, I mean, the whole set is like 132 cards or something like that. Um, and then they just have some of the best non-holo artworks, some very controversial artworks, the Sabrina's Gaze. Um, you'll notice that the, she looks like she's flipping you off here, and so just different things like that. Uh, Pre-release Misty Cedra here, and then the Gym Challenge uh, insert here as well. I think it's so, so cool. Now the reason this Charizard actually isn't graded is because I I, I pulled a pack fresh one um, and I actually have that one graded so I decided just not to grade this one. But the idea of having all four gym leaders or all sorry all eight gym leaders from the two sets 
um, and then their Pokemon associated with them, I think was one of the like most genius ideas uh, that Pokemon did. And I think they really missed out by not doing that for Generation 2. So if you guys are Generation 2 Pokemon fans, uh, we really missed out by not having the uh, Gym Heroes uh, kind of style for uh, Generation 2. I think I think that would have been super, super epic, like Claire's Kingdra and all that kind of stuff for English. I know they printed some of that in the VS series for Japanese, but it's just not the same. All right, on to the Neo sets here, guys. Uh, the Neo sets are my personal favorites. Uh, I love, love the gym sets, but I'm a Generation 2 junkie, so love the Neo sets. Um, Lugia, just to give you guys an idea, I guess I'll pull the Lugia out. Uh, to kind of show you what I use as a binder card. You'll notice the print lines here, but you see how clean everything is. The cards themselves are very, very nice. I have a full spreadsheet. I've kept track of all the conditions of everything as well. Uh, Typhlosion number 17 obviously is another huge, huge one here. But the introduction, I believe, of baby Pokemon was in this set. So... There's some really cool, really cool commons like Cleffa and Togepi and um, just just really cool, really cool artworks in the Neo Generations. They really experimented with some of the art styles as well. On a Neo Discovery here, um, this set is probably my least favorite of the Neo sets, but it's still just absolutely amazing because like a basic Pokemon with an holographic pattern I mean that's just like a unique idea I guess they were trying out you also have Umbreon and Espeon uh, I did grade the Umbreon it was super super mint uh, just a little off center was the problem And you guys are probably wondering why this is an A3 ring binder. I knew I was, I know I'm going to get that question, so I'll go ahead and answer it now. I very, very much like the Ultimate Guard um, pages here. I can customize the binder to be exactly how many pages I want it to be. And I can make my sets exactly how I want them. So. I can pull sets out and move them around if I need to. I can make the binder exactly how many pages I want to make it. And also with the Ultimate Guard pages, the cards are super close together. There's not a lot of space in between. And the cards fit super snug, and they're extremely safe. There's a huge gap in between here. It's got the D-ring, and then this real felt interior on these Ultimate Guard three-ring binders is just the best like these these binders and these pages are the best that I've found and I've experimented with many many binders are right, on the Neo Revelation this is one of my personal favorites of all the sets um, the Ho-Oh, the Houndoom, all the legendaries in this set, Celebi, Entei, the dogs the dogs were historically some of my favorites from the games so you really just can't go wrong with Neo Revelation, as well as well it says as a first introduction uh, to the Shining Pokemon. Now you won't see the Shining Pokemon in my binder; they're all graded, and I'll get to those in a minute. So uh, Neo Destiny, wow, um, one of the most expensive sets by far. Honestly, one of the best sets, too. It's just amazing, the dark and the light Pokemon, how they did it. Um, I don't know. If you if if you don't like this Ampharos and this Scissor and and all the cards, the, the Dragonite and everything, if you don't like these cards from Neo Destiny, I just don't know. I just don't know if you like Pokemon. Here's my light Arcanine. Beautiful, beautiful mint card. Most of these cards were bought raw. Some of them were bought graded and cracked out. Um, obviously not the more expensive ones, but but then they also did the dark and the light Pokemon in the non holo um, slots as well. So I think that was uh, super super cool. The, like the Nine Tails and the Machoke and the Wigglytuff. All of these are just so so classic. Love the uh, light artwork for the uh, evolutions as well. All right, and that's it for the sets. 
we just need to go over the Shining Pokemon now. All right, we'll start with the Shining Gyarados and Shining Magikarp here. The Gyarados is a nine, Magikarp's an 8.5, Celebi's a PSA nine, the Shining Charizard, nines across the board, perfect mint Charizard. Honestly thought it would grade better than that, but CGC grades pretty harsh. A lot of these are graded by CGC. So Shining Kabutops is a nine, Shining Mewtwo, 8.5, Noctel 8.5. Noctel is actually the worst condition of all of them. Uh, as, you can see, as you can see, it's got a couple 8.5s and actually an 8 edges. So it's the worst condition shining of, of all of them by far. The Raichu is a 9.5. Got a really good deal on that, so made it, so went ahead with that. And then 8.5 on the Steelix and Tyranitar. Both of those I thought would grade 9s. And some bonus footage here. If you guys don't know what a Neo Revelation Hollow Bleed is, now you do. Hope you guys enjoyed. That was my binder collection. And uh, if you guys are working on the same collection or similar collections, I hope you guys success in completing them. And we'll see you next time.